A few words about hypersensitivities. I don't want to repeat my lectures, I just want to structure it for you. So, hypersensitivities refer to type 1. This is allergies mediated by IgE. Type 2. This is mediated by immunoglobulins, that's blood groups, consequences of improper blood transfusion. Type 3, also mediated by IgG, that's immune complex formation. And we have type 4, which is T-cell mediated. Now, um, I want to say a few words about each of these types, but I'm going to do it separately. So, hypersensitivity type 1. So, we have allergen, that's type 1, we have allergen, that is recognized by the B cells, stimulates the production, differentiation, and proliferation of B cells, and plasma cells produce IgE. IgE binds to the surface of the basophil. That's IgE. And then next time, that basophil with the IgE on its surface is exposed to the allergen that leads to degranulation of the basophil and degranulation essentially is the release of the histamine. It can be a basophil or it can be a mast cell. The point is degranulation, release of histamine and histamine will induce all those typical allergic reactions that all of us are very well aware of. Now type 2 responses. So type 2 is the blood groups, transfusion reaction, stuff like that. The mechanism of the blood groups, let's talk about it for a minute. So we have four blood groups in the ABO. One blood group is O, nothing on the surface. Another blood group has the it's called agglutinogen A on its surface. Another blood group has the agglutinogen B, and the fourth one is both A and B. Those are red blood cells. So, turns out that this group, which is O, in the plasma, as both antibodies, alpha means and tai, antibodies against A and antibodies against B. This one has only antibodies against B, this has only antibodies against A, and this has no antibodies at all. So, all in all, we've got red blood cells with or without certain antigens, and antibodies. So what's going to happen if you will transfuse blood group A into the person with the blood group B? These antibodies right here will bind to its target antigen A, leading to agglutination of red blood cells, hemolysis, um, hypoxia, um, obstruction of the blood vessels, and so on and so forth. So, obviously, Red blood cells that can be transfused to anyone are these ones. So this is the universal donor. Now the person who can receive any blood type should be a person without antibodies, meaning that this group, AB, is the universal recipient. So again, O is the universal donor, AB 
It's the universal recipient. Now, in the same line of thinking is rhesus conflict. It turns out that some people have red blood cells, a so-called D antigen, and some people have red blood cells without. So these people are called rhesus positive. Rhesus because this antigen was discovered in rhesus macaques. And these people are rhesus negative. I want to explain, I want to remind you, rhesus antigen is different from ABO blood groups. So what happens in the rhesus conflict between the mother and the child? So rhesus positive, well, it's not child, it's a fetus. Okay, rhesus positive fetus, rhesus negative mom. Okay, so they are separated by placenta. Everything's fine. That's the first child. During birth, placenta detaches and some of the fetal blood enters the mother's circulation. And mother's immune system produces anti-D antibodies and they stay in the mother's circulation um, for a long time. And then during second pregnancy, during second pregnancy, this anti-D antibody can cross placenta and attack the D antigen, the red blood cells of a second fetus, and this is called a hemolytic disease of newborns. Right, so class 3 and class 4 hypersensitivities. Well, hypersensitivity type 3 is immune complexes, so you have self-antigen, some kind of a protein that is normally produced in the human body, but for some reason you have antibodies that recognize it. And you've got antibodies that recognize it. These antibodies get deposited into basal membrane of various epithelial layers and then neutrophils and macrophages neutrophils and macrophages start to attack it and to destroy this immune complexes. Uh, the main problem is that as they destroy basal membrane they essentially lead to the infl endothelial inflammation and endothelial dysfunction. If this is the endothelium in the blood vessel it's vasculitis if it's an endothelium in the liver glomerulonephritis. Um, if it's endothelium in the heart, endocarditis. Now type 4 hypersensitivity is delayed because it's mediated by T cells. So allergen, I'm going to put allergen here, is recognized by T cells and that leads to the formation of the pool of memory T cells that remember that allergen. So memory T cells, when there is a second exposure to the same allergen, differentiate into CD4 cells that activate macrophages. So that's activation. They don't turn they don't turn into macrophages, they activate macrophages. And CD8 cells, which differentiate into, into cytotoxic lymphocytes. And these two cells, macrophages and cytotoxic lymphocytes, attack the site where there are uh, molecules of antigen. For instance, poison ivy response is like this. You get exposed to the poison ivy first time, you get the pool of memory T cells. Second exposure, they differentiate into CD4, CD8 helper killer cells. So you've got helper cells stimulate macrophage activation. So we're going to start talking about adaptive immunity. And cytotoxic lymphocytes attack tissues and destroy it. 
So I hope that clarifies more or less, gives you a quick run through over the um, main types of hypersense. So lastly, we will chat about transplantation and a few different types of um, immunodeficiencies. So transplantation. Four types that you need to know. First type is isograft. Order is unimportant. Isograft is the transplantation from one identical twin to another. Identical twin. So no, basically no rejection here. Next one is autograft. Transplantation from self. So for instance, when burn patients receive the transplant, the, the skin graft from the back onto the wounded area. Third time is allograft. From human to human, these humans are not identical twins. Even if they are brothers, sisters, mother and father, stuff like, you know, mother and daughter, father and son, doesn't matter. Allograft. Complete strangers, still allograft. And finally, xenograft. Xenograft is the transplant from an animal to a human, uh, mostly Cardiac valves from pigs to humans can be transplanted pretty successfully. Now the reactions associated with transplantation. One is graft versus host disease. Graft versus host disease. So donor provides bone marrow, basically immune system and donor T cells attack recipient. Okay, I'm not sure that I spell recipient right, I think. Recipient tissues. So that happens in case of leukemia when patient who receives the graft, um, his or her immune system and bone marrow is completely destroyed, it receives the donor bone marrow, donor, donor bone marrow produces donor T cells, donor T cells attack immunologically different recipients tissue. And rejection is the opposite when a recipient immune system attacks the, trans, the graft. So for instance, when a patient receives um, a kidney transplant, his or her immune system will attack the kidney. So finally, very brief, two types of um, immunodeficiencies, congenital immunodeficiency and acquired immunodeficiency. I talk about it in the lecture, but just to kind of summarize very briefly, acquired, anything that you're not born with, things like HIV or cancer, okay? Congenital things that a person is born with. So that would be D. George syndrome, no T cells, functional T cells, A. Gamma globulinemia, that's a long word, that's no B cells, and severe combined immunodeficiency, no B cells, no T cells.